All right, 15 minutes later, we got some fresh crab. So uh, Helgramites are great largemouth and smallmouth uh, bass baits. They uh, emulate or imitate uh, little um, grubs, I think, that turn into a beetle or something later. Um, but a guy out of Oregon makes these, sent me some uh, samples and said, hey, I'm using these for surf perch and they're doing pretty well for me. Uh, why don't you give them a shot? So uh, let's give it a shot. It looks a lot like a gulp sandworm, but it isn't. It isn't scented or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of good. And the plastic is pretty tough, so it should stay on this uh, bait holder hook pretty well. So let's cast in the surf and see if we can uh, put a surf perch on this Helgramite. Uh, Helger might really isn't doing the job over here so let's switch it up to something that we know is tried and true and that's the uh, Berkeley gulp sandworm so I'm gonna slip that Helger might off the hook pop open my old power bait jar take out a gulp sandworm let's throw it on the hook put it in the water and see if we can catch fish uh, that we're not catching with the Helger might Maybe it's a crab. It's not fighting. It's probably a crab. Feels like a good crab. Oh, what was that? I could have sworn it was a perch because I saw some, it looked like it was shaking. I, yeah, you know what? I don't, uh, it might be the Carolina rig getting buried for a second, but I keep snagging something right here. Okay. You think I should get my snare? You know, I'm going to go get it. I'm gonna, let me go, I'll, I'll go get it and set it up. I think there's crab here. All right, changing gears up here. Both uh, Die Hard and myself think we snagged into some uh, Dungeons crab. So in two seconds, I ran to the truck and brought everything. <laughs> so here we got here we got two rods, a bunch of snares, uh, sand spike. You know you know what's going on. So right here in this pocket. We've hooked up into some crabs, so let's see if we can take them legally. It's illegal to take them by hook and line in the state of California, but legal to take them with snares uh, as long as you only have six loops per snare. Um, and actually, there's no maximum amount of rod that you can use in the surf. You just have to exhibit control if a ranger comes by and uh, asks for uh, your information, all that stuff. You just got to prove you know what you're doing and you're not... Uh, gonna harm anyone on the beach with all your gear so there's two of us two rods should be enough let's see if we can uh, catch some legal dungeness crabs on the beach legally all right so we got a little bait bag here got a uh, squid of course uh, squid makes excellent crab bait um, not only is it super stinky but it stays in the bait cat bait cage a really long time so here's our uh, crab snare this was uh, actually given to me by a really nice guy. Uh, his name's Eric, shout out to Eric. I call this the Big E Crab Snare, and frankly, it's the best one I've ever used. Um, because it's small, it casts super far, and the design of the loops, the design of the snares themselves, uh, they're kind of a floating design, they're not fixed, and they just work. Everything on this Crab Snare just works really well. <laughs> nice, so. I saw another one too. Oh, did you? 
Yeah. Wow, okay, so that's exactly what we're targeting. If you don't know what a Dungeon's Crab is, super tasty crustacean uh, out here in California. Found from California up to Alaska. And uh, sometimes you can pick them up right in the surf. They're legal to harvest by hand in the surf. You just can't get them with your uh, hook and line. So that's exactly what we're targeting. They have to be five and three quarters inches from lateral spine to lateral spine. California, you can take male or female. This is a small female, so we're gonna toss her back. But just an example of the crabs that are out there. Crab ball. All right. Oh, there's crab here. Yeah, it does look like a little male, huh? All right. Ah. Yeah, male needs to be about an inch wider, but they're here. Good sign. Set him down. Let him go. Oh, get him! Get him! Get him! <laughs> oh shoot! Oh shoot! Moment of truth. Ah, uh, she looks short. Oh, short by an eighth. Pretty heavy though. She has some meat in her. All right, we'll toss her back. They're getting bigger. Put this little mama back. Ooh. Big male, or it's a male. I think it's the best one of the day so far. Like short. Yeah, I think so. By how much? Eight? About eight. Okay. Dang. Close. Dude, this one's like got. This one's actually got some meat on him finally. Yeah, that's a male, right? Yeah. Yeah. Woo, getting bigger. Dang. Getting bigger. Maybe. Just. No! Oh no! That was my favorite snare! Wow! Yeah, I don't know. I mean... Maybe it was just a... Damn. Die hard. Living, living life hanging on by a thread. I think it's time to uh, reline your spool, <laughs> re-spool your line. <laughs> Dude, that's a keeper. Think so? I think so. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, hell yeah. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On the perch head? Yeah. Nice. Good job, dude. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that might be it. This could be our lunch. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> might not be enough meat for two. Two <laughs> might be your lunch. <laughs> I might be watching you. Uh... <laughs> oh hell yeah, dude! That's got to be like at least six, six and a quarter. So, you... Yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're right. Six and a quarter. Yeah. Nice. Nice, dude. All right. All right. We're eating something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, as you guys saw, someone had an epic day, uh -uh. and uh, it wasn't me, it was Die Hard Fishing, so of course you guys know who that is. So after stopping at multiple beaches up and down the coast, we finally settled on this one, and uh, even though it was low tide, like king low tide, it was like epically low, still provided. Check that out. So we've got a healthy size uh, uh, barred uh, surf perch, and uh, three uh, female Dungeness crabs. Now they're all um, minimum five and three quarter inches um, or larger. They're all heavy uh, and uh, they just look delicious. Now again, in California, you can keep um, male and female crabs as long as they're five and three quarter inches from a uh, lower point to lower point. So I just wanted to show you how we're gonna cook these guys up. We're gonna steam them on the beach and uh, it's really easy. All you need are three extra aluminum pans. Uh, this is the one uh, that they're actually gonna steam in. So we're gonna fill this one with water. 
we're gonna cut this one up this one's basically gonna hold the coals that we have over here we're gonna cut them up in such a way that um, it kind of becomes the heat source and elevates the plate that's going to um, you know steam the crab and the fish and we have a third plate here that's gonna act as the lid. And we'll just poke some holes so everything aerates. Now, these are um, all pans and stuff that are recycled. I had these uh, at previous uh, family meals and instead of tossing them out, I washed them and saved them for a day like this. So let's show you how we're gonna do that. So we're gonna take our bottom pan here. This is the gnarliest one. We're just gonna cut some simple slats all the way around, maybe two on the long side and uh, one each on the short side. And what that does is not only does it create a ventilation hole for air to move in and out as the coals burn, but um, when you fold them in, they create uh, like little feet for um, you know, the pan that acts as the oven. So we've got our slits here. So I'm just gonna push them in and basically invert them. Three, four, five and six so now we have a platform that we can put our uh, actual cooking pan surface on and uh, as you'll notice there's more than enough uh, room underneath for air to flow by and uh, for the charcoals to sit so we're going to lay the bottom with charcoals light them let them ash over and uh, hopefully cook some crabs Pop the shell off. Never done this before, but you know, I've seen, seen a couple YouTube videos. So. so there's all the edible pieces of the crab. There's the shoulder meat in there, and then all the legs, of course. Water here, almost boiling. Now we're just gonna drop our crab legs in here. As fresh as it gets. They're still moving. <laughs> oh, they're still moving. What we're gonna do is scale and gut this perch. So you just use the back of the knife here, run it backwards along the scales. Those will all come off. Boom. Boom. All right. So you have fish, no scales, no guts. This is good to go on the, on the grill now. later we got some fresh crab <sighs> time to eat okay the time's finally come I've been waiting all morning. I'm sure you've been waiting all video for the payoff right here. So we've got three fresh Dungeness crabs plucked from that ocean about 20 minutes ago, not even, and a nice size uh, barred surf perch to complement everything. So simply uh, steamed using ocean water. Now they say when you cook um, uh, crustaceans, maybe even fish, I'm not sure, but definitely for crabs, you always want to keep the uh, salinity of the water close to what the salinity of the water that they came out of was and uh, nothing like the ocean water that they came out of with, right? So uh, we steamed them, die hard piece, take this one, 
And uh, cheers, bro. All right. Thanks for uh, catching everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Pleasure. Look at that. Still has the crab butter on there. Yum. Mmm. So good. The, the, the cool thing about cooking it in like ocean water is it's like a saltiness that you don't get With by adding salt. table salt yeah. to water. It's like, it's hard to describe. There's that kind of salinity. If you've ever surfed or swam in the ocean, that kind of like aftertaste that you get, even after you've kind of cleaned up and everything, I don't know, when you add it to, to food and, and uh, especially, you know, food that comes out of the ocean, it makes it taste that much better. Oh, the piece. We're gonna dip it in the butter that the fish is frying in. <laughs> oh yeah, damn. That's good. That's hella good. You know what that tastes like? There's a restaurant in Redwood City called the Lobster Shack. And they sell like a $20 lobster roll. So it's like this little bun with like a bunch of lobster stuff in it, but it's covered in butter. And that's as close as you're gonna get to that. Yeah, that's how good. I think this is better. It always tastes better when you catch it, right? Oh, hell yeah. All right, we're gonna peel away the shell here. Take the leg, dip the whole leg in the butter with the juice from the leg. Damn, that look good. <laughs> uh, all right, he's going in for the perch. How's it looking? Good. Good for it. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Oh, right off the bone. Kind of rub it in the butter. Steaming, piping hot perch from the ocean about 15 minutes ago. Steamed. In, was it in the crab juice too? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, crab juice, buttered up surf perch. You yeah. ready? Yeah. All right. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Surf perch is notoriously mushy. This yeah, is pretty is. mushy. Um, you really have to bread and pan fry surf perch to have a chance at it not falling apart. But the good thing is, it's really easy to peel off the, the spine and the bones. So unless you're like eating the whole thing whole, it's pretty easy to uh, you know stay away from the main bones. Yeah, the, from when I cook it at home, the faster you cook it, the more or the less mushy it is. Mm. So it's kind of hard on the grill, but mm. I can taste the salt. I can taste the pepper. Garlic salt tastes good. But there's a trace of like crab in it. <laughs> it's like, it's hard to explain. Like surf perch is actually one of my favorite eating fish. And I've heard they're a lot like pan fish, like crappie yeah, and stuff like crappie. that. Mm. Dude, this right here, sticking the leg in. You know, the, that little shoulder piece, mm -hmm. that's like gold. Yeah, so this little shoulder piece, that's kind of like, just like jutting out of the leg. It's like dipped in butter, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tip off and it's gonna turn it into a straw. So all the natural juices that are in that leg are gonna come right out with the meat. Ready? It does taste like victory. Adam's victory. <laughs> I like to leave the skin on the perch because it adds a little bit of crunch. 
Yeah. And it holds all the flesh together. Mm. And dude, I wish we had Tabasco. <laughs> and a nice. Corona. I'm gonna get a little bit of perch. Sprinkle it with a little bit of crab. Put it in the pool of hot singed fish butter. Yes, that's what I was looking for right there. Kind of the burnt skin part. Mmm. Let's take a bite without butter. Mmm. <coughs> Hit a patch of salt. <coughs> Too much flavor. <laughs> I can't take it. Must keep eating. <laughs> Do you think at this point people have like clipped off the video? <laughs> like, all right, guys, I get it. It's fun. It's just another crab. It's just another crab. It's not that good. We've seen Matt's do it before. We've seen June do it before. I think they're still watching. I hope so. <laughs> Hope they make it to the second commercial at least. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're sharing it with a friend. Or liking the video. And commenting below what's their favorite crab to eat. I would say subscribe, but I think they're probably already subscribed. Probably. Maybe though if they're inspired to try this on their own, they don't have the gear. They'll look at the associate <laughs> links in either video. If you're gonna buy it anyway, you might as well support the channels. Good point. All right, we're coming down for the last claw in the tray. I think he's working on the last leg. So thanks again to Die Hard Fishing for uh, saving the video. He caught three uh, Keeper Dungeness Crabs on one rod. It should fish zero <laughs> across three, but that's the way it goes, at least whenever we fish together. <laughs> so again, this, uh, this little oven setup was super easy. Just need uh, three of these aluminum foil uh, pans. If you cook with these often, uh, just save them. When you're done with them, wash them out, put them aside, and we showed you how to make a quick oven. And if you catch any crab uh, or anything, you know, uh, that's legally uh, able to keep, um, you can simply steam them or pan fry them um, in a setup like here. Butter, oil, you really don't need too much. And, uh, you know, cook them down 10, 20 minutes later, and you have lunch or dinner ready to go so thanks again for watching if you stuck all the way through don't forget to subscribe to this guy pinbone's coming back <laughs> and uh we'll see you guys in the next one thank you